Hi everyone, my name is Shafiq and I, we are from group 35 and now we are going to present our project. Next to this, cube are commonly used in healthcare institutions to aid patients with disability in swallowing solid foods. Patients are fed about 5 times a day and the syringes are reused throughout the whole week. Therefore, the syringes need to be clean and dry so as to not attract bacteria that could be harmful when entered the patient's body. The team has to come up with an idea of a machine that will clean, dry and sterilize automatically with less human interaction as healthcare workers are always busy with patients. In the first conceptual design, the syringes will be placed on the holders that has holes so that it is able to spray water on the insides of the syringes to clean it. Water sprayed from the sides are also to clean the outer part of the syringes as well. After the cleaning process is done, the fan will turn on to help in the drying part. Through design, there will be like a conveyor belt that holds the syringes and then it will repel them down to be washed and dried. As you can see in the box, there are different boxes with four different functions which is the wash, dry, and sterilize. The third conceptual design, there is a claw-like grip, which, is, which will also hold the syringes and then it will bring up and down. There will be a disc platform that is split into parts where each section has its own function, which is to clean, dry, and sterilize. The fourth conceptual design, the syringes are repelled down into a tub of water However, in this design, it uses ultrasonic cleaner to clean the syringes instead of spraying water. After the cleaning process is done, is the syringes are pulled back up and then the fan will be turned on to start the drying process. In the fifth conceptual design, the syringes are placed on a platform that can be submerged down into a tub of water which is also going to be cleaned by the ultrasonic cleaner. After it's done, it's going to bring the platform back up and then there will be a camera to check the cleanliness of the syringes. When it is clean enough, the fan will be turned on and then and to dry the syringes. Now I will pass the time to JJ to explain more on the concept selection. Thank you Shafiq. Now, lastly, the team designed a QFD and decided some qualities that will be used that we felt that is meaningful for the product. These qualities are then separated and ranked in another different table. Here, the qualities are ranked according to its weightages, one being least important, five being most important. Similarly, the concept one of to five are ranked accordingly with the same system. These points are then multiplied with the weightages and then sum up at the end as shown below. As seen, concept one has the highest total score which ranks first among the five concepts. The team then decided to further improve on concept 1. This is through introducing a water pump, a sonic cleaner which is used to clean the syringe, a fan to dry, and a camera to check after each process and updating the user accordingly. Now for the syringe holder, two different holders are shown, one for the plunger and one for the syringe. It's held at an angle so that the camera can pick up the whole parts of it. However, if you notice, the holder where it holds the syringe area does not have any hole for drainage. This is mainly because it may cause an error for the camera as it may pick up as a dirty spot. To solve this drainage issue, the platform is designed in a slope to ensure that water is able to flow out. A hole is designed at the end so that any excess water will flow out accordingly. So for prototyping of the syringe holder, the syringe holder first uses a clay, whereas the holder for the plunger uses two chopsticks and a plasticine. The downside to this is that it is too weak to hold the plunger and it breaks off too easily, which leads to prototype 2, which utilizes a toothpick. These two are then placed together in a prototype where it simulates the base as shown earlier. However, because of this, is too big for the dimensions is too big for the camera to pick up. Thus, a next prototype is designed where the syringe and the plunger are put together in the same board 
where it allows the camera to do some testing on it as it is within the area of vision. So for the material selection, the team decided to use polypropylene. This is mainly because firstly, it is food safe and secondly, it is high heat resistance. The reason why the team decided to use a high heat resistance is because in the product itself, the temperature is higher than room temperature. Thus, it needs a material that is able to withstand any high heat that may occur. Lastly, because it uses ultrasound, a rigid material is needed to prevent any failures. Now, I'll be moving on to the mechatronics side where Pradeep will go more in depth about it. Pradeep, please. Thank you. I will be covering the mechatronics of the device. Under mechatronics, there's the functionality and usability. Under functionality, there are three stages that has to be done in one cycle, fully automated. And these are washing, sterilizing, and drying. There's also the requirement for one cycle to be completed in less than an hour, and also for the cost of the device to be relatively low. Under usability, the nurse has the display, of the process stage information, the ability to choose between washing and drying, and also the ability to operate the machine via a lo local network from any mobile device. The components used in this project are the standard components provided for the project. The, next, we look at the process flowchart. In process flowchart, there's the pre-process, the main process, and the post-process. In the pre-process, the nurse is required to pour hot water into the reservoir tank which will be monitored at 50 to 70 degrees Celsius. As for the main process, when the process starts, water is pumped into the tank from the reservoir and the ultrasonic cleaner is turned on for the cleaning. Next, once the cleaning is done, the water is drained and the fan is turned on to dry the syringes. After that, the lights are turned on for the camera to detect the syringes if they are dirty or clean or even wet. The NAS can restart the entire process or start from stage four, where uh, extra time will be given for the syringes to dry. The entire process takes 51 minutes. Next, we look at the Arduino code flow chart. We begin with the inclusion of libraries, definition of pins and constants in void setup. A uh, connection establishment is made between Raspberry Pi and the Arduino through I2C protocol. Next, we also initialize the LCD and set the pins to either inputs or outputs based on the requirements. Under void loop, two sensors are constantly running, which is the proximity sensor and the <coughs> humidity and temperature monitor sensor. Apart from that, uh, all the other components are kept as a separate function and will only be called when required when the Raspberry Pi sends in either one or two or three different functions are activated for one and three. The entire process will be started as long as the proximity sensor shows a value of true, which is when the lid is closed. If it is not, a warning message will be shown. Once the lid is closed, the following functions are carried out in order, pumping of water into the tank, cleaning of the syringes through the ultrasonic cleaner, draining of the water, turning on the fan to dry, and the LED is turned on for the camera to detect. Once the process is finished, it will return back. If the value received is two, only the drying and the LED on stage is activated. Next, we'll look at a circuitry, which can be segregated into two parts. One is the one that is powered by Arduino, and the other, which is powered by a separate power supply unit. The ones powered by Arduino, which is the LCD display, proximity sensor, temperature and humidity sensor, and the solar motor requires relatively low voltage and can be controlled easily by Arduino. The others, which are the fan, LED strip, ultrasonic cleaner, and the water pump requires a higher voltage of 12 volts and can also be still controlled by Arduino, but, but they do lack the wire for the connectivity between Arduino and these components to communicate as such, a relay or a switch is required to turn on or off the components. Next, a few tests were conducted for the efficiency of the device. One was the fan's efficiency and the second was the water pump efficiency. 
for the fans, the number of fans tested was one and two, and the number of strings ranged from one, two, four, and five being the maximum. From the data shown, it is we can conclude that the two fans is the best gives the best results and the lowest time taken for the syringes to dry. As for the water pump, only one water pump is given, which takes about 12 minutes to pump water from the reservoir into the main tank. However, if we were to add an extra pump, the time would be reduced by half to six minutes. For considerations and improvements, there are a few things to look at. One being the electronic footprint is big currently as it is a prototype and breadboard is used. A custom PCB would be much easier to connect and also would reduce the footprint of the electronics. Other considerations include water level sensor as fail safe to ensure water does not overflow. The Arduino Mega can also be replaced with a custom PCB and a microprocessor as the Arduino Mega has too many pins which are left unused and also proper electrical isolation and management for the safety of the user is necessary. And this will also increase the longevity of the device. I will now be passing the time over to Yixiang for computing science side. Thanks, Pradeep. Hi, I'm Yixiang from the CS side. And I should soon here with me today. We will be presenting the computer science portion of the project. Starting off, what we did. We created an automated object detection system for the nurses so that when they are going to sterilize the syringes, there is no need for them to check the individual syringes whether it is fully sterilized. Secondly, the nurses can also view the state of the syringes after cleaning and can opt for a reclean just by using a web interface implemented. The web interface can be accessed as long as they are connected to the same Wi-Fi. For the functionality of the system, the object detection is using a model which was trained by us so that it can detect syringes in different states, which is mainly clean, wet, or dirty. There is also a user interface for users to view and send commands via a button to Arduino for a reclean or a drying purpose. For the hardware, we are going to use Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, Core USB TPU, and Raspberry Pi Camera. Next, I'll be passing my time to Shushun to present the next part. Thank you, Yixiang. Computer vision was used for this project due to this project and budget and constraint. We realized it can either go both ways, either implementing it with computer vision or without it, depending on the use case and the budget which end users are willing to pay for. If users are willing to pay more for convenience, thus improving their work efficiency without having to physically examine the strangers, costs will increase due to the usage of computer vision and the Core Edge CPU. Alternatively, we can still make use of an even cheaper RPI, such as the Raspberry Pi Zero with a camera module attached to it, allowing us to monitor the strangers through the wireless LAN without the usage of any computer vision to determine the status of the strangers. This will actually reduce the cost of the building the product, but also reducing the functions of the product. The users are only able to monitor through the web page or by physically going to the machine to check on the results and determine whether it is suitable for tube feeding. Computing resource is needed, as this current project machine learning model is trained approximately one and a half days using a GTX 2060 with more images added for better improvement to the model in the future. A more powerful GPU is needed to increase the speed when training the model. If there are no local computer resource available, deploying the training on the cloud, such as AWS services or Google Colab is an alternative. Next. For the improvements to the model, having more images consisting of a mixture of synthetic images and real images for the computer vision model, we will be able to detect the stringers condition in different lighting as the current model is built to detect clean, wet and dirty stringers where the dirty syringe has to contain brown and white substance to be able to de detect it as a dirty syringe. Thus, adding different shades of color in the syringe will eventually make the model classify it as dirty. Currently, our project human intervention is needed to actually trigger the Arduino Mega through a web interface to rewash or dry the syringe. Improvements can be made to fully 
automate the process by using computer vision to determine the current conditions of the shingles if it is not up to a certain standard, example, wet or dirty, or it has to be rewashed by automatically sending a command over to the Arduino. Next. This is the block diagram of how the model was implemented and how commands is sent to the Arduino Mega. Before the, tra before the training of the model, 700 images of the stringers, which consists of clean, wet, and dirty stringers are taken. Images are separately heard randomly where 80% of the images goes into training the model and 20% of the images is used for testing. Images are then labeled using an open source software, which is available on GitHub called Label IMG. After labeling is done for the training and testing images, the model used for training is the SSD mobile net V2 contacts. This specific model was chosen as it allows the usage of the Corel USB TPU to increase the FPS, which is frames per second of the object detection. Other models was considered such as the faster RCNN, but can't be used on the Corel USB TPU. Training the model was done on a local desktop GPU with TensorFlow. Once training is done, a simple HTML page was created using Flask, a micro web framework that uses Python to display the live object detection results coming from the camera and three options to allow the end users to start the Arduino Mega. These three options are dry the changes, rewards the changes, and starting. When either option is selected by the end user, it will send a command from the Raspberry Pi to the Arduino Mega to do the necessary washing of the changes. This concludes our presentation. We will now move on to how our product works. This is the user interface. In the user interface, the nurses will have three options to pick from, the main one being to start the device. When the device is turned on, there will be a message then to close the lid. This is to ensure the device is closed before the machine is turned on. When the lid is closed which will be picked up by the infrared sensor, there will be a lid close message sent. Afterwards, the process will begin. Firstly, the water will start pumping. For demonstration purposes, the pumping will only be done for 10 seconds. Once the pumping is done, the cleaning process will start. For demonstration purposes, the cleaning process will only be 6 seconds instead of the actual 6 minutes. Afterwards, a servo motor is turned to drain. Afterwards, the fan will be turned on. Time is not included for the draining process for this demonstration. After the fan is off after drying, the light will be turned on for the camera to check if the syringes are cleaned. Once the check is done, the light will switch off and end the cleaning process. Once the process is finished, the camera will pick up whether the syringes are clean and dry. If not, it will indicate it to the user. If the syringe is wet and the nurses press the dry syringe button, a command will be sent to the fan to continue drying the syringe. When the process is done, the light will be turned on. This is to ensure the camera is able to accurately capture the status of the syringes. If it is not up to satisfactory, the nurse could click on the rewash syringe option which would restart the entire process. User will pour hot water into the reservoir tank and there will be a sensor to check if the water is warm enough. Dirty syringes are hung onto the attachment that is slanted to make sure that excess water can flow out. It is placed in the tank where there will also be an ultrasonic cleaner that is going to do the washing of the dirty syringes. When closed, water will be pumped from the reservoir to the tank. After the ultrasonic cleaner is done, water is then flushed out of the tank. The camera will check if the syringes are clean before turning on the fan to start the drying process. The camera will check again to see if the syringes are dried and will display on the LCD screen that the process is completed. This shows the 3D CAD model of the product together with its exploded view. Thank you.